So what we have today is a little bit of a Mythbusters session. Let's go. Ibrahim Masri, I'm from IC Technology. I'm the Managing Director. My role in the business is the General Manager. Uh, my name is Ahmed Kanji. I'm the CEO of Gridware Cybersecurity. They want me to just bust these myths or tell you if they're uh, uh, out of yeah. real? Once a computer is formatted, all data is considered permanently deleted. The formatting is not zeroing a hard drive, so you will always have uh, data still on that drive. Um, it just might not be read by the PC or the or the Mac, so pretty pretty easily recoverable. That that would that'd be busted. If you want to permanently delete data, you have to zero the hard drive. There's only special ways to do that, or you just chuck it under the ocean. Yeah, put a hammer through it. Yeah, <laughs> throw it into a fire. <laughs> yeah. That's the safest way. My turn? For it. The only way to get a virus is by downloading and running a program. Downloading and running pro programs can be remotely launched. Um, you know, you don't have to download it. You can, you know, open a file and, and it'll launch itself and, in, and install itself. Yeah, and saying that, even though it is busted, there is many ways to get a virus. Most viruses are through receiving a file and downloading. Now, it's, it's probably the easiest way to get, to get hacked, right? Yeah, or just uh, <laughs> to make your password password. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of doing it. Pretty easy to get a virus. Oh, so definitely busted that one. Easy. So definitely don't download pirated software off Pirate Bay. Uh, <laughs> you'll be in for a surprise. I don't, uh, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do it. Um, an IT department in an organisation is solely relied on to combat cyber threats. I think we've learned maybe in the last couple of years that um, cybersecurity is not just an IT problem. And so, yeah, you need a little bit more than IT. I mean, uh, but naturally, IT is going to be a, a big portion of, like, your cybersecurity controls, but a lot of them can also be governance and human-related, like, I'd say at least 50%. So, Well, the last project we worked on had an IT department, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> so, Sometimes obviously. the cause of me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It didn't help that IT department at no, all. No, it didn't. It didn't. Unfortunately. Okay. Only large businesses are targeted by cyber attacks. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Like we, the last one we just did had 25 staff, so we wouldn't consider that a large business. But any, we've had clients that are, you know, had five users and, and been targeted by ransomware. Um, it's anyone they can get into, really. Yeah. Uh, anyone that they feel has valuable data. A single person could have value, valuable data. A one-man band could have very valuable data and are willing to pay a ransom for it so they become, yeah. you know, a target. Investment managers, yeah. traders can have many organizations with a couple of people worth millions of dollars. Yep. All right. Up to smart to fall for phishing attacks. Intelligent people do not fall for phishing attacks. Uh, 1,000% busted. Phishing's become very, very sophisticated, um, especially with things like spoofing domain addresses and AI for mm. for, for uh, improved language or, or mimicking people's uh, writing styles. It's um, anyone can fall for phishing. So you've got to be... Very vigilant. A cybersecurity degree will guarantee me a job in the field. <laughs> yeah, there's no guarantees in anything in life, so especially the one in cybersecurity or IT in general. Yeah. Um, a degree will help. Uh, it's no guarantee there. There's a lot more skill involved than either ha in just having a cybersecurity degree. Big time. And also certifications. Just yeah. because you have a certification doesn't mean that you're at a certain level or, you know, you're guaranteed a job. There's like so many other factors I think that contribute. Yeah, we have interns in our in our business come through every quarter um, in all different places. So it's 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 something yeah. they have to work for and, and achieve. I keep going for the big ones. Yeah. <laughs> changing my password regularly will keep me safe. Uh, changing your password can sometimes actually cause you more grief. The important factors like having multi-factor authentication is probably your best way of securing any any particular account. So. Just because you've changed your password, it may mean that, that if that password's leaked, it won't work anymore, which is good, but you, it's not about changing your password every day or every month. Password one, password two, password three. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty easy to get. But stop putting exclamation marks at the end of your passwords. We all know how it's done. <laughs> Damn. That's my go-to, man. You just kill me. Or a dollar. <laughs> a VPN will keep me anonymous slash secure online. Busted. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that's it's it's one of those ones where people think I've got a VPN on and, and that's it. Uh, it's, yeah, YouTube it's announces you need to stop. <laughs> VPNs is not security. Doesn't make you secure. Yeah, just makes it hard for people to know who you are. Pretty much. It's a good one. That's a good one. Cyber threats always come from outside the organization. 
Uh, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. In digital forensics, we have a saying that it's inside a threat until we prove otherwise, mm -hmm. and always. Mm -hmm. So until we ever prove beyond reasonable doubt that a uh, threat actor is, is an external, we always assume it's internal, and that can help in a few ways. Yeah, and inside a threat is a big, is a big growing area of concern for lots of organisations. Or inside a triggered. Yeah. Is it you usually find someone's opened an email or gone to a website yeah. within your network, so... And I'm not giving anyone any ideas, but the dark web does have some posts that about, hey, do you, if you work at an organization, we'll pay you to click this link or we'll pay you to execute this payload. Yeah. I haven't seen that. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's exactly crazy. Incognito mode keeps you anonymous online. Even Facebook knows about incognito. <laughs> Seriously. Um, no, that's, that just doesn't save what you're doing on the fly. But it's funny, I was... I done something in Kagera the other day because you use it to do fresh searches and yeah, stuff like that. Or, yeah, or you know, or you know, you need to log into another email account that's not saved in that browser. That's a quick way of doing it. And then um, I don't know what I search for, but then my Facebook account, it's like, oh, you know, even Facebook is still data from incognito. So. Incognito just hides your cache and cookies basically from the uh, from the websites. A green padlock on my browser's URL bar means the website is secure and all is safe. Uh, no, busted. The lock icon, I think, usually refers to the presence of an SSL certificate or That's HTTPS, right. where it's a secure, there's a secure connection between you and the, and the website. Um, it means nothing about the security of that website or the legitimacy, um, because you can get a free SSL certificate. Um, mm -hmm. Almost every website has one, um, except the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. So big shout out. They're still waiting to get the SSL certificate 25 years later. Yeah, I don't know how that happens, but anyway. Is it that difficult? I don't, I don't think it's that difficult. We'll continue to wait. Let's see if it's a part of the 2030 vision. Public Wi-Fi is safe as long as you don't enter personal information. Okay. You, you start any census with public Wi-Fi is safe, and <laughs> that's a big no-no. There's nothing safe about public Wi-Fi. People use it. Let's, let's be serious. Um, you know, just minimise your interaction on it. You're really opening yourself to where that Wi-Fi is. Do you trust the public Wi-Fi? Yeah. How public is it? Because you can have all sorts of people sitting there waiting to intercept data. It's so easy to buy a Wi-Fi pineapple these days. Like yeah. anyone can go and set up fake fake Wi-Fi at an Very airport easy. or shopping centre or anything yeah. like that. And there was that uh, young person that was arrested at the airport. Uh, for running a Wi-Fi pineapple, which mm. is uh, not very smart, not recommended. So always be careful. All right, let's go. This is the big mama one. Oh, I'm not important enough to be hacked, and my data is not valuable enough to make me a target. Smiley face. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not... This, the thing is, threat actors are not looking for someone with lots and lots of money. They're looking for anyone and everyone, um, because anyone can be a victim, really. That's why a lot of threat actors have shifted from trying to get into your bank account and more looking to take your data or images and, uh, you know, ransom those, uh, ransom so they don't go and share them online. Pretty or much. even pretend they're going to fix your computer and they're from Microsoft and yeah. you give them your credit card details. So that's, you know, someone might only have a, a few hundred dollar limit on their car, but they're happy to take it. Yeah, and that's still a big one that targets a aging population yeah. and Australia is a very aging population country, so it continues to be a massive target. Max Mac OS are not vulnerable to cyber threats. Yeah, that's a massive myth. So Macs are vulnerable, users are vulnerable, um, so the users use Macs. I mean, there's less, um, there's less uh, uh, malware written for Mac OS. Yeah. Um, but but sometimes when we find there is malware for Mac, it tends to be like a much bigger doom and gloom type situation, like it affects every device in the world. All yeah. of but uh, Windows is like a, a trash magnet for a lot of malware writing because it's so easily accessible, and, and Mac OS is not as easily accessible for, hmm. for, for threat actors around the world. And I think um, Windows being the predominant software for corporates yeah, yeah. makes it more of a target, but it just you know, it doesn't mean that Mac OS is not a target. Definitely a target still. Mac OS is still better than Windows. <laughs> I don't know. That's oh, sorry. Jeez. It's the truth. Um, Cybersecurity jobs always require highly technically proficient individuals and or coding knowledge. Oh, that's totally busted. Um, I'd say more than 50% of the cybersecurity workforce doesn't know how to code or program. Um, and that just shows you how wide cybersecurity is, not just um, technical roles or pen testing. Um, mm. Pen testing is only a small portion of, of cybersecurity professionals. So I guess you do have to have some technical knowledge, um, but like not deep technical knowledge uh, as long as you have a good IT person near, nearby. 
you can always ask a good question um, yeah and get you going policies to be written consultations yeah. have you done yeah there's training a, yeah yeah professional development there's all sorts of stuff to do okay phishing attacks are solely ca carried out through email mm. that's actually a good one so phishing is predominantly email yeah but, but you can fish through oh do they call it social engineering now is that a better word for it i don't know yeah it's just what they call and 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 pretend why does like, everything need to have a word i don't know there's, 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 i was never consulted the, about this before. the social engineering is quite yeah. prominent now is, yeah. is that is that the new buzzword that's going around social, social scare? yeah vishing with the voice yeah, yeah. Uh, deep fakes and yeah. um smishing. smishing smishing smishing's a thing SMS. oh yeah makes sense <laughs> yeah, so, so I'd just like to call it whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, SMS yeah. fraud. So yeah, SMS fraud, email fraud. All people just calling on the phone and being polite. What do you call that? Yeah, yeah, I think that's fishing. Social engineering. Social engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Kevin Mitnick. Rest in peace. I'm not vulnerable to cyber threats if I don't have a PC or laptop. Mm. Well, maybe you're not vu vulnerable to um, malware, but. Uh, a lot of social engineering, which we were just talking about, can happen over the phone. You can be socially engineered to make a transfer of funds, um, and you don't need to have a PC or, or laptop to be cyber attacked, so to speak. Yeah, yeah you can do it over, yeah, over your, your, your phone. Or... Firms. But that's a tough one because like, that's going to be your 1% of cybersecurity's kind of related um, incidents that don't involve any PC or Mac or, yeah. or computer device. Yeah. It is much safer to save or store files on premises than on the cloud. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing because I had this conversation with someone only last week because they believe that their little room in their office is more protected. Yeah, why not? We're just like, I need to be... <laughs> yes. Why not? There's nothing oh, do you have an internet connection? Yes. Okay, so, you know, these, these, these massive companies like Microsoft that spend billions of dollars a year trying to protect your data, you have the same budget. No, definitely busted. Yeah, I've had the opposite too where they said everything is secure. It's in AWS cloud. Yeah. No need to worry. No cybersecurity required. No. And no, it's not. It's all about the controls around the perimeter security. So it doesn't matter whether it's on a hard drive in your, in your office or if it's on the cloud. It's all insecure if you let it go. Yeah, and then people can just come in and steal it as well, just to make it even. Don't yeah, forget the cyber. If the cyber security is, people just walk in, take your server, and walk out. I know, but it can happen <laughs> to cloud too. I've watched the movies, you know. Yeah, um, they can steal data. It can come down from the roof. <laughs> like cloud security is also only secure as um, how secure they are on the day. So there, there are ways um, people can infiltrate. Not to say it's common, but I'm just saying you're asking about the possibilities. So yeah, yeah, it can happen. And us too. Yeah, these have been pretty good. Yeah. Good work, Chant. Shout out to Captain. Hand, handwritten as well. Using MFA will keep me safe from cyber attacks always. These are getting really good. Yeah. Well, MFA is really good to secure um, your accounts, but cybersecurity professionals have seen that um, even two-factor authentication can be uh, hijacked. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, extremely scary and worrying. Not definitively secure, and there are always multiple ways to... Um, secure your account and everyone knows with gmail like we have 2fa but still screams everywhere where whenever you've logged in from a new location it sends you about 10 alerts and you're like yes this is me calm down someone launched the other day no passwords the only way to log in is through multi-factor authentication yeah um that's that's quite new and then and maybe that is the future of passwords but then doesn't that become one factor then yeah <laughs> but the other thing is we we had a again a client that we got a phone call your 2fa doesn't work yep yeah, we still, this person's email still got hacked. And we're all scratching our heads thinking, yeah, unlikely. So we actually re-engineered the same process. So we said, okay, who was the user? Mm -hmm. So one of our staff called, pretended that there was support, didn't tell them it was us. Oh, my God. And we asked him for his code and he gave it to us. And actual true story. And we recorded the call. There you go. And sent it back to the director. So it's another two problems. So PD. I always say to people that, you know, the PD is so important. Yeah, professional, professional development. development. Yeah. You know, teach your staff what to look out for. What are the simple do's and don'ts to protect themselves? Because yeah. most cyber attacks now come through individuals doing the wrong thing, or not. Uh, they just purely don't understand. They're not doing it on purpose. Yeah, they purely just don't understand. Well, I had a friend who was on uh, vacation and uh, kept getting alerted. Please approve your two factor. Please approve mm. your two factor. He's like. Oh, it must just be my laptop or something and just hit approve and um, compromise the entire organization. So every time he goes to a work event, uh, he, reminds us, <laughs> he reminds the CEO that that was me. I'll never let him live it down. Uh, ransomware attack is 
over once a ransom is paid? Um, no, most companies that get ransomware are companies that have been ransomware in the past. That was some of the data that showed. So if you get hit, you're going to get hit again. It becomes like a, uh, you become a trophy, really. Um, no, it's not always guaranteed um, that the threat actors will, will leave you alone. Um, will they give you the data back? Will they unlock your files? Maybe yes, maybe no. I uh, never trust the criminal's word, but um, it definitely isn't over. Uh, you def- there's a lot of security that needs to go in after a ransomware attack, which you'd know. Yeah. A lot of sleepless nights. That's where the, that's where the real work yeah. starts, is how to stop them coming back. And you have to redesign everything, yeah. reinstall everything, and it's a bit of an IT, IT nightmare. My guys don't like it when, when we have to deal with ransomware attacks because it's basically kill everything and start again. Yeah. And yeah, which is you, a long you don't know where they've left. Yeah, you don't know where they've left the trail. It's like finishing your uni essay, but then deleting it at the last second, starting again. <laughs> yeah. It's really what it's like recovering from a ransomware attack. So, yeah, it's not good. No. Do the best to prevent it. Prevent. Last time, you can completely secure an organization from cyber attacks. That's a definite no. <laughs> Just, there's no two ways about that one. Unfortunately, it would be great to have the, the, the golden bullet or the silver bullet or whatever one you want to call it. Uh, it doesn't exist. You, know, yeah. you can do the best to prevent. You can do the best to teach the team. You can put the processes in place um, in case of, a, of any infiltration. Yeah. Make sure you have the right backups. It's important to consult with excellent cybersecurity people to, to put the policies in place for you. Yeah. Uh, so that way you're ready if or when it happens. You know, we, we had a dis- we had a discussion last year and it's like there's so much overlap but we're still completely separate. Mm. Um, so mm. yeah, if you can have a good cybersecurity specialist and, and a good IT company and, you know, like, you know, we do a little bit of cybersecurity stuff but it's absolutely tiny. Um, the specialist stuff is with people like Gridware and then we support them to, to keep it that way. Matt, that's it. Done. Thank you so much for net busting.